Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and I'm here with What's Going On, which is a discussion about current events which are broiling our country, our state, and our world. And I'm here with Pete Garitano, who has um, has agreed to comment on these events with me today. And that's um, and so I hope that this will be shown later, so that everybody will get a chance to see this show. Today we're going to start with an article that I read in the New York Times over the weekend, which made the point, an interesting point, of that in the current political climate, there appears to be a war against women and girls, which is going on on both the left and the right, especially that has become obvious with the overturn of Roe v. Wade and other issues which are linked to gender issues, which are also occurring mainly from the left. So we'll start with the attack on women and girls from the right, and that is with the overturn of Roe v. Wade. Not certain that Pete and I see it in the same way, but anyway, we'll start there, right? So what do you think? What, how do you analyze the overturning of Roe v. Wade? Well, I'm not an attorney or a constitutional expert, and I know I know the reasons that were stated, um, and there's disagreement on that. Certainly, you disagree with the reasons. Um, I personally don't think it's going to be a big issue because I think most people had already picked their side before this happened. In most states that had picked their side, the people are either unhappy or happy with it. The majority of the people, just like any issue. Um, I don't agree with it because I've always been pro-choice. Mm -hmm. um, but I really think what's happening, yeah, certainly you can you will look at it as an attack on women's rights. I, I agree with that. But um, the the Democrats are, I, I think, are trying to use it best they can because right now the cards are stacked against them because almost all their other policies have been a, a disaster and. And caused you know the last two years. Let's just say starting with Biden, um, and and a lot of people are ready to jump ship, jump parties because of that. So this is their one thing. I think that they, in the last two years, feel like they can ruffle some feathers of the basically the fence sitters. I mean, we know it all always comes down to the people who would change, not the ones that have always voted Democrat, always voted Republican, they're most likely, but then there's like the five or 10 percent in the middle that swing the elections, depending on what the hot topics are right now. So the, the abortion thing is a hot topic with the liberals, the left, and the Democrats, but, I, but um, it's how much mileage they can get out of it is going to be the, the, the big thing. And, you know, I, I mean, personally, I think what's happening to the Supreme Court justices is not helping the case. Oh, I agree. I you agree. know, because it's making it's making the left look like what they always accuse the right of doing, like extreme violence and all this stuff. And and uh, so, you know, if I was if I was in charge, which I never will of be, the Democratic Party, I, I would mean, say, hey, let's call it cool. It I would too. Yeah, and I'm not in charge stop either. Stuff because Although, yeah, the, the window blasting and the the uh, confronting in restaurants of the Supreme Court justices is. Uh, is not helping your case to make your side look civil and sane. So. Well, there's also an attack on the court itself, but let, let me um, talk a little bit about what I think happened with the overturn of Roe. And that is that um, it was based on, to me, an improper legal theory. Now, there's nothing you can do about it, nothing. I cautioned some of my friends this morning, this struggle is over. It now, this issue returns to the state, and we have to make each and every state safe for women and girls. H however, I also do believe that because of the political agenda of the court, that's why it was overturned, because I think they overturned it based on really shaky grounds, and this is why. Um, because what it does is disempower women and girls. It takes away their right to make important medical decisions in their own conscience with a, do with a doctor or without a doctor. It takes away, in other words, the same rights that a male would have. A male has the decision-making power, doesn't a male, to go to a doctor and make choices in the best interest of his health, correct? Even if it involved a vasectomy, even if, if it involves some kind of uh, um, anything to do with their reproductive life. They have the ability to make that choice in the privacy of their doctor's office with a doctor, right? And the government has no real right to interfere with that choice. 
correct? And right. it doesn't go to the legislature. It is a male's human right to make his own medical decisions in his own interest. So when this row was, was first argued about, it was argued on the basis of the 14th Amendment, which gave all persons born in the United States the equal protection of the law and also guarantees of due process. So it guaranteed to women due process and also uh, to their rights as a born person to be protected by the U.S. Constitution. All of a sudden, this disempowerment says that a woman cannot make those choices. If abortion is recommended by her doctor or in her own conscience, she can't make that choice anymore if she lives in certain states because abortion now has been criminalized. And so uh, a woman just can't make those choices about a termination of a pregnancy in those case, in those states, right? Right. So it's denying her that human right. Now, the opposition would argue that, so what is now going to be decided on in each and every state legislature? Uh, chairs. Okay, my argument is legislatures have no business deciding on the human rights of persons. No business. They cannot decide, for instance, that your speech is so dangerous that you can't have the rights to free speech because that is an inalienable right, just as women have, in my view, the inalienable right to make important medical decisions in their own conscience and with their own doctor. Now, that's why I think their reasoning was wrong. I also think it was totally political. We knew when Trump was elected that this was going to happen, correct? That was. We knew it. He yes, said it. Said that and happen. so that's what happened. I believe it's because in that race, Hillary Clinton was not a particularly strong candidate. So I believe that's why Trump got elected. Elections have consequences. He got the judges he wanted. And it's a done deal, except on a local level. Now we have to fight if we're interested in women's rights. And by the way, this emphasis on abortion rights, I think, was wrong from the start. These are the rights of women and girls to make their own medical decisions. So emphasizing that it's only about abortion, it isn't. It's about their rights to make important medical decisions, which have been evaporated. And that's why it disempowers women at a very... A vulnerable time. It says to a woman who is pregnant, maybe newly pregnant, well, you can't, you have to carry this child to term, regardless of the condition of the fetus, regardless of the, of her own health condition, period. There are cases, I'm not certain how accurate, of 10 year old girls being pregnant against their will. Where are they going to go if they live in certain states which have banned abortion, right? Okay, so, uh, and there have been cases like that in other countries. There was one reported also in this country, but I don't know if it's accurate. I just heard that it might not be accurate. So, so. you brought up the opposition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the opposition for a while, even though that's mm -hmm. not my, and I think it's, you had previously said the problem was the argument was always the wrong argument, and you said yeah. it shouldn't have been the abortion argument. Right. But the argument has really always been you're killing a life. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. And so that's the argument you you say that they should have avoided. It was just should have been about women's rights. Right, exactly. And the other argument right. was when, which also became a, 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 an area of contention with the the right. Is that is it the heartbeat rule, which I believe is twelve weeks? No, I don't think so. I think it's earlier than that. And no, it's I think it's twelve and twenty four. Mm -hmm. But anyway, there's the heartbeat rule, and then there's the viable fetus right. rule meaning that, that if a preemie was born, they could survive, and that's about the six-month rule, I believe. So it's like the three-month, six early, months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like mm -hmm. three, six, and nine. Yeah. And Vermont already had one of the most liberal laws in the country, one of only, I think, six states. And no, that, it did not have any laws about it. No, 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 right now, if you look at what yeah. the states allowed, uh -huh. Vermont was one of the few states that allowed it to, to term. Most of the states mm -hmm. either have the 12-week or the 24-week law. But you're mistaken about that. What do you mean? I'm sorry. The Vermont Supreme Court does not make, at this point, before, I think there's a legislative attempt to change it right. this time. Before that, Vermont made no decision about that. It was simply a medical decision. Abortion and... That's what I'm saying, there was no No, no, term. no, there was nothing there. And so it remained a private decision between a woman and her doctor. If it was a late-term abortion, 
if it was that, it was still a decision, a medical decision between a woman and her doctor. And many doctors would say, no, I can't do that. Wow. That's the way it was. And even, you know, th what you're ignoring also, Pete, is that sometimes late-term abortions have to happen medically. Oh, I'm not ignoring it. I'm just telling yeah, you. Yeah, but I'm, you are. You're saying well, that, I'm telling you know, the view of the right. The view of the right. You have the right to go to a doctor about it. What? About late-term abortion. No, I'm saying the view of the right-wing yes. people right, was that right, but, right. I that understand. Some of them, some of them would have been okay with the 12 week, or the, but but the, the, a lot of people but, said they right. got too extreme by by not having any rules. We agree that there should be no rules because right. it's a woman's choice. I'm no, just, it's not a. Ch sometimes it's a medical necessity. Or, well, it's but a, put it, it that way. It's right. And now we have a bill. We should talk about this so we don't get too far off track. That is being presented before the voters this fall to make a constitutional amendment yep. for a woman's right to reproductive liberty. Autonomy. Liberty. That's it what says. It's autonomy. Yeah, liberty. No, liberty. Okay. And so where do you stand on this? Because I have, I have opinions about this also. <laughs> My position is that um, women, I don't think it even should be in public policy, re remember, that this is my, I agree okay. with you there. Okay, it's not a question of a constitutional amendment. Abortion should be decriminalized. Once you put it in the, uh, and, and by the way, the only criminal sanction on abortion was against a doctor, okay? A doctor could be penalized, even sent to jail, if he or she performed an abortion. If a woman did it herself, there was no crime. So there's no homicide involved in the way it used to be. Okay, now it's in public policy, correct? Now everybody has a chance to vote on this. Okay, so it says, I believe, reproductive liberty. And, it's, right. and people are going to be, it's, it's called Prop 5, and it's going to be part of the now the public debate, right. which I think is a really big mistake because I think it, it, it probably includes abortion. Right. But it also includes this, I think, I don't know for sure, because the language is so vague, correct? The language is very vague. We don't have, do we have well, it? Sa it, says, it says children. Yeah. So, yeah, I know I, I have it on my phone. It says uh, women and children, okay. So, obviously, we talked about it's possible for a 10 or 12-year-old girl to be pregnant, mm -hmm. that she should be allowed to do what she wants with that pregnancy. Do what is necessary in her own best interest. Yeah, okay. But the, the way the language is written, there's other possibilities because it says reproductive liberty. So does that mean a 12-year-old girl could say, I want to sterilize myself, take my uterus out? That's the question I would have about this bill. Right. I know, asked, and I don't, I mean, the language is so vague. Right. I read a Boston Globe article. There's, this is not the only state which is doing this, by the way. Uh, other states are doing it. So I read a Boston Globe article that really kind of shed some light on at least the interpretation in other states. And other people are arguing that reproductive liberty, and there's also a second part, I believe, for a person to pursue the course of their own life, a person. Right. So, that so does that, that mean that they can consent to even uh, this, uh, what's called gender-affirming surgery? Does that mean that they can consent to um, hormone treatment, or when they're when they're twelve. Yeah. So, so you think you said in the Vermont bill it says a. Per, you mean it's not just women? I thought it was pretty much women. Would it, like women's. No, it's persons. Oh, I thought it said women's reproductive freedom. Off. It doesn't. It says reproductive liberty in the first place, and then okay. I believe it goes on to say. Maybe you could look it up. At me. Uh, it goes on to say that a person has the right to, pr and it should include men and women in that point. Well, no. But, so, so my big problem with the bill is we just went through two years of COVID. I know. And, and 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 I I like the idea for people to have my body, my choice, but it should be a blanket thing. It, no, it, I think it made a, they made a big mistake. The, and, and I think yeah. that that um, this is a situation where, I, you know, I would agree with the other side of the spectrum that, yeah, well, wait a minute. So a woman has, a person has uh, the right to do what they want with their reproductive um, body, but I have to, but other parts of my body I don't have any rights over? That's what it's saying, only my reproductive parts. It says, it says if I, if I um, we really should have it, I wish we had it. I believe, what I saw was reproductive liberty. Right. Bing. And yeah. then there was a second part to it that said, 
persons have the right to determine the course of their own lives without interference from the state. So essentially. I would love to know if that's going to include okay, the vaccine. Okay, first of all, okay, but it's first of all, you're right. Yeah. I think that there has been a fatal contradiction in this whole argument from day one. One, the the I think that the more left, that's what I'm trying to say. The left has argued mainly. Uh, it's this is also a partisan argument, pretty much between the Democrats and the right. Republicans. So the Democrats. Um, and the, whatever we call the left in this country, have argued for, really, I think wrongly, for abortion rights. I always think they should have argued for women's rights and girls' rights to determine the course of their pregnancies. The, in fact, it shouldn't be women in plural. A pregnant woman, a pregnant girl, should be allowed to make that her... That will solve the problem that I have with it. Right? Yes. <laughs> yes. And it, would, and it doesn't mean... It's an ind, it is not a group thing. It's, right. a, it's a decision made by an individual woman or girl with her doctor, and it shouldn't even be in public policy. Right, but they put it into public policy. Well, it's being it's being touted in the amongst the, all the backers of it that this is the only way Vermonters will be able to sh assure rights to abortion. With right, the and there are other ways. Decision. Right, right. And so it'll probably pass because Vermont. Well, well, because of this. But I think that we were talking about there's huge questions right. about the language and right. what it really means. Right. You know, I mean, right. I mean, would you want? your 12 year old child to go like go into a, a doctor and say you know I really don't or, or well that's yeah. what the globe pointed out could that's, that that's the left's problem okay. what you're saying that's the left's problem right. they're, they're gonna maybe be for part of this and maybe they are in favor of a, of a young person uh, underage going to a doctor and getting hormone treatment maybe they are without right. parental consent maybe they are but certainly the right is not interested no, no, in no. that well no we, we know in Vermont there's there's been a bill introduced um, they changed the numbers now I think 659 by seven or eight women that are in the house that they want to have um, children able to do this without parental do consent. Do what? Hormone treatments? Horm not surgery, but hormone treatments or puberty blockers. It says it without spells parental? without parental consent. And it has no age limit. So it, it, theoretically, you could be eight. So, you know, it, it, there's no, I mean, right now, I mean, I've read a lot about this, kind of the typical guideline is 12 and 16 for those two things, but it's been done earlier. All you have to do is get a waiver signed, which I, UVM has a waiver, pretty much every are hospital is doing Are they doing that it. at UVM? Uh, supposedly they are with, if, if you get a waiver, but you have to get parental consent and have at a signature. At this point, right? And the waivers are pretty extensive. I mean, I have a couple from a couple different hospitals here. It, not it, just in Vermont. Not just in Vermont. There, there. I mean, one's from California, one's from an Oregon hospital, and it's pretty extensive, and it tells you in pretty plain language. But the question is, does a child understand this? Does a does a child understand that it might be permanent? Well, no. It says right here, permanent. <laughs> in all these waivers, these changes might be permanent, and these changes will be permanent. And so, I mean, it states very clearly. This one's from uh, the Los Angeles Children's Hospital. Um, it says loss of fertility right here, you know, um, side effects, um, you know, other things like your voice is going to get deeper or anything, you know, stuff like that. So they have separate, so they have separate um, waivers for testosterone and for estrogen that, that usually state the possible and the, and the, you know, this is going to, you know, permanent and non-permanent. And also almost all of them say that we have no idea of the, there's no, there's no good data on the long-term side effects, the so long-term. So, you do this when you're 12. You really nobody really knows what's going to be because there haven't hasn't been enough. Yeah, there's not data. been enough. There's not been enough, and and there's a huge spike in this right now. So this is, like I said, this is one of the issues which could it be linked though in Prop Five? Well, yeah, we, we don't know, we right? No, right. That's the thing. And the and the, inter the interesting thing to me is that this is also partisan because we, you right. and I, have seen um, analyses of this from. Republicans I, that have analyzed, and they say it could include both. Right, right. Okay, right. so if it includes abortion and includes uh, this gender affirming care for, for children, children right. I mean, that's to me, if this, if, okay, so if this is defeated one way or another, it's really a lose lose situation. Right, because then it's going to be perceived by the Republicans as having lost everything—the uh, rights 
of women and girls and also exactly right. so in other words if this passes in vermont and well bill, this is by the way by the way this is not a bill this is an amendment to the vermont is that constitution better or worse? if it goes into the vermont constitution well what do you think i think it's worse okay yeah. well a lot of people might but i've heard I, I mean i've read that this still won't matter if if the let's say a Republican becomes president and overwhelmingly the House and Senator are Republican, they could pass a law, federal law saying that this doesn't matter, our Constitution. Is that true? No, because okay. remember that <laughs> how, I mean, you know, I, that's what some lady told me that I was having, a, having an email or okay. well, somebody who is in, yeah. in favor of this. Okay, listen, yeah. we all know one thing, don't we? That laws, where are they tested? Supreme in the Supreme Court. Court. Yeah. Okay, so if this law, if, okay, so for instance, Vermont has now codified the language of Roe into our law. I'm not talking about the Constitution. Right. Okay, so guess what? Somebody comes along and, and says, um, and somehow gets the standing enough to sue about that, arguing that it's now unconstitutional. Right. Well, yeah. then it's overturned again, right? Right. Okay, so. So, so on to the, we've got 10 minutes, the, on to the, the, the problem, the problem the left has with the reason the New York Times article, yeah. where we think that the, 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 the left is also destroying women's rights and children's rights the same that the right is with the anti-abortion. Yes. Okay, and the reason the left is doing it is really this issue of removing things like women, motherhood from our language. Right, I was saying, shocked. Yeah, that, that you, can't, you can't have these things even in your language, which to me, I'm not a woman, well, but it would be incredibly watching. insulting to me. You know, I think you should be proud of motherhood and be be, pr be proud of being a woman, and for for the reasons that, you know, it's it's an amazing thing. So to, ha to have somebody say, well, we can't say this in the national education, the NEA yeah, is well. Let's talk about that. Speech, okay, right? there were two, there are three things that happened this week that I took uh, note of. One was um, the NEA, the National Education Association, which is proposing changes in language. Right, right? it hasn't done it yet, has right. it? And yeah. one of the ways it was doing that is to replace the word mother with birthing person, I think. Right. And chest feeding. Right. So yeah. what does that do to, okay, so that was one, of, right. one thing that happened. Then another thing that happened was that a young woman here, and we have a copy of the press release, put out a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood and, and the um, Trevor, Tra Foundation. Trevor Foundation and use the word people with uteruses. And the third thing right. that I saw was Amy Goodman today. Amy Goodman is on uh, public access every morning and she's, I would, I would consider her a leftist, right? Sure. And she used the word pregnant person also. Right. It's the elimination of of uh, gender, of uh, sex terms. Right, so, right, right. I mean, I want to say gender because the argument on the left is that gender is a social construct. Right. So I'm talking about biology. Right. So it's removing biological terms, correct? Well, it's removing biology. And, and, and Mainly we women. say it's disempowering women more than yeah. anything else because they are the producers of life. I mean, they're the ones that have to have this ability. They're the ones that do the hard job. They do the hard, they do the heavy lifting. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they say, well, we, we don't want to call you, as if there's some other, and this is the argument certainly of the right, is this is ridiculous because you can't have a uterus unless you are a woman. You can't actually be, right. give birth unless you are a woman. <laughs> and so why are you eliminating so, this? Why are you calling it a birthing, this, a birthing person? It's, it's a woman, it's a mother, you know. So, right, it's, and, so this language, this little language thing that one side says, why are you getting all tweaked about? And the other side is, says, because it's nuts, is a big issue right now. Well, no, the, I wouldn't even say nuts because that's too vague. I think it yeah. eliminates women and girls right, from right. our language. It's Every, damaging, right, to, to um, 10,000 years. But of, there's a lot right. of people who do not agree with us. I don't, I, I, right. because there's enough, I guess, males who are entering into, no, what way, what, what way is that? Males who are entering women's spaces, I guess, and, and think or have, or think they are becoming women, maybe they say they are women, right. that are, saying that we have to now use the word person rather than woman and girls, correct? Right. Is, that, mean, the, is that it? That's it. But I mean, then the other part of the argument, which I think the right's going to win, is this whole, I, the whole idea that 
women, a man who just thinks he's a woman can go into a, a prison, go into a women's prison. Right, which and is you have out, data on that. Really, it's working right. out really poorly, which is not a big surprise. Yeah. Um, women have gotten pregnant. That's, that's true in California. California, Oregon, New Jersey, women have gotten pregnant because they put uh, men in there who still were biological men, but just, you know, and the whole sports thing is oh, going to crash and burn. And that's, and that's horrible for women and women's sports. Yeah. There's no men who are going to transition to a woman and then try out for a woman's sports team. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> no, the other way around. There's right, no because, woman who's transitioning. It would be the worst out there. Yeah, I mean, no, wait a minute. No, I think you said it, it would right, be a woman I, transitioning to a man and going into Right, exactly. And then, male and then sports. That wouldn't happen. It no, doesn't it wouldn't happen. happen. Right. It's but not it ever going to happen. Okay. Right. I so, had a transgender brother. So so right, right. now the Republicans in this in this issue have I think un unfortunately for the, the left some really important strengths in this and that Meaning that the majority of people don't agree with some of this. Right. I think the majority of people in the, on this issue think everybody should be treated equally, nobody should be discriminated against, right. you shouldn't bully people, blah, blah, blah. But then it, 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 in certain things, even with that, is this, but we've gone too far here, you know? Well, um, I think that you're touching on such intimate subjects that um, I think there, if, if, I don't know how clear the Republicans are on any of these issues. Well, no, but um, it's the same. I mean, there's Democrats that don't like this, but too. But they, they, the Republicans, I know, and a lot of Democrats don't like it right. either. But the, but the Republicans are clearly what they would call anti-abortion. Right. Okay, so they're going to vote no on this. And some, and they're also going to vote no maybe on some of this transgender stuff. I would stuff. think they're pretty so, clearly against um the uh, what was it called um, affirmation gender affirming medical care yeah so yeah, what's children. going to happen to the, okay so i happen to think and i've had big arguments with my democratic friends that this is going to be a very big issue in the fall i don't know that it has doesn't seem to be at this but i think it will be well if well, well certainly not taking sides certainly, if they're smart it right. will be but, right, but certainly Roe is already going to be a big issue, correct? I think it's going to be almost gone by then. Why would you? you because I, the, my statement I made in the beginning, well, I know you disagree. The statement I made in the beginning is pretty much every state that already was against it, there, nobody in their state's minds changed that much. I mean, yeah, the minority. The minority in Mississippi are mad about this. The m minority in Vermont are... are um, are uh, mad about this because they 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 wanted there to be you know no there are what am I saying you know what I'm saying yeah right in the states where you know they're happy with the decision and unhappy with the decision the people that are unhappy in one state are the minority and like in our state if you were if you were um, if you're mad about Vermont's laws you know what what is it like a, it's like 80 percent in Vermont believe that women should have the right to. It's pretty high. Yeah, right? I know. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Right, so right. it's not going to matter in Vermont. It's not going to matter in Mississippi. That's my point. In individual states, there's, there's very few states. There's probably some on the fence, just like with every issue. But most states have already, you can once again divide them. The South, blah, 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 you know, Northeast, California, they're all, you know, they're already, they've already taken sides on this for the last 30 years. It's, it's an issue, yeah, but I don't think it's as toxic an but issue But if it's going to be in every legislature, like it is here. Was already passed through some of the legislatures. I know, but it. In, but I'm in telling South you, South Dakota it, and in any places. Right. A couple, but right. not all of them. Not right. here. So I think it's. I think it's. I do think that you're underestimating the, the, the those okay. issues. But maybe. The but economy. Maybe, maybe you're right. We, everybody, yes, everybody says it. Economy is going to be right. number one, and and and. Oh yeah, you think so? You think that those parents who are going to school boards are just thinking about the economy? No, no, no. But I'm just saying. I think that's going to be the the death knell if there is yeah, one for the Democratic I, Party I, I, because I it's so it's bad one. right now. And what if it gets better? It can't. Why not? Because the, <laughs> I, I just don't think it can because everything that's happening, supply chain problems, gas problems, they're, they're not going to be cured instantly because we keep, the people in charge keep doing, shooting themselves in the foot. All right. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything in, in close? Anyway, so getting back to this New York Times uh, article, I was really... Uh, my mind opened up about that because what really is happening is that women and girls are being erased. They're from being disempowered yeah. and they're being disappeared from both the right and the left. And I think, yeah. I think if 
for instance, in women's sports, what the heck? Well, that, to me, that's, no, the, that's the one that's, that's the most toxic, really, it, to, to anybody that has a child right. that's competing in, you know, some 30-year-old skateboarder just beat a 14-year-old girl in New York City in some competition Is that right? on money because he said he, he felt like a girl. But, and because he was still a he. He was still a he. In a, in a well, way. all right. I, as I said, it, I had... A, that's I, a toxic well, one for I just want to mention one thing about my own brother who was transgendered. And, um, but he was a tennis fan. And he said, watching female and male tennis, he would, he would say... Males are just so much stronger yeah. at you know at this. There's than no men. there's yes. no dispute about that. That's it, even why though that woman in the Bobby Riggs, well, uh, Billie Jean King yeah, beat yeah. the hell out yeah, of Bobby Riggs. It was like sixty years old. That's a great movie, Battle of the Sexes. Did you ever see it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a yeah. great movie. I think I saw it on the plane. It was one of the ones I ran. Okay. Before. All right. So I think we're out for a month or so. So we'll see, see how you things have changed in a month. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you.